I have arrived. I am home. Is your practice to survive? It's not a luxury. If you cannot be yourself, if you don't know how to handle the fear, the despair, the anger in you, you are lost. You cannot help any other people. You cannot help your people. You cannot help your country. Sister Chen Kong and myself and other people was in Singapore in 78, organizing a rescue uh, operation for boat people. So many boat people were dying in the ocean. And Singapore is a very hard had a very hard policy on boat people. Every time there was a, a boat carrying boat people to the shore, they try to push them out into the sea in order to die. They don't want to. They didn't want to host. And those fishermen who has who have uh, who had who have uh, compassion, who were able to save boat people drowning in the sea, were punished. They had to pay a very huge money or, or some money so that next time they would have no career to, to save uh, both people. I went to Singapore with the, uh, to attend a conference on religion and peace. And I discovered the plight the suffering, the existence of poor people. So I stay on in order to secretly organize a rescue operation because I knew that the government of Singapore did not want me to do that. And I had people from France, from Holland and other countries in Europe to come and help me. And we, re- we hired a boat we bring uh, medicine, water, and food to the sea, and we try to rescue people. The policy of Singapore at that time was uh, to reject more people. Malaysia also. And they prefer to to, to have the boat people die in the ocean rather than to, to bring them into, into land and make them into prisoners. I sent a number of people to go up along the coast of, uh, of uh, Malaysia and they have this uh, witness to so many uh, so many um, tragic uh, events. They had met with uh, both people. There are those uh, who just stare into, into, the, into space and did not know, did not know what was happening. They could not believe that that is the reality that there are human beings living around them. It seems that people did not have a heart, did not have uh, uh, any sense of humanity. They came two boats full of of poor people and the police force them to go out. And then finally one boat capsized because of the embarkation that they use is not very solid. It's not seaworthy. And all the people on the other boat saw it, saw the people drowning. And no one can swim to the shore. 
And that is why they determined to go in again. The boat who did not uh, capsize. And after having landed, they destroyed the boat so that they would not be pushed uh, out again. So the police had to bring them to a prison and waiting for them to bring another boat in order for them to be put on and to, and to, and to, and to push into the sea. That is the common uh, policy. Immediately, our friend called the press, the journalist, because the journalists are the only one that can say that. If the the the, the journalist know that there are both people uh, uh, that have been. Held, and if they take a few pictures and put it into the newspaper, and then the government of Malaysia did not dare anymore to push them out into the sea. That is uh, one of the things we did in order to save the people. They were put into prison, but they are safe. The UNSCR, the United Nation High Commissioner Commission on Refugees, UNHCR, United Nation High Commission on Refugees, was having an office there. They will be invited to come and take notes and take the names of refugees. And these refugees can maybe stay there, maybe stay in there for several years without having any chance to, to be settled in another country. Because the UNSCA well, did not work uh, diligently at all. And we discovered that there are so many uh, boat people uh, kept in the in the island, uh, many island without any hope to be resettled. <coughs> years after years, in Singapore, we had done something illegal. We went to when the to the fishman house, and he said that, well, any time you rescue a boat person, you telephone us, you come and take them, so you will not be punished. So we gave them our telephone. So from time to time, the fishman will call us, and we use a taxi, and went there and took the boat person. And then we used the taxi to go into town and to go to the French embassy. I have to say that the ambassador of France in Singapore, his name is Philippe Gasso, is a man of heart. He knew what we were doing. We came at night when the embassy was closed. So we, we took uh, the boat person out of the, of, of the taxi. And we helped them to climb into, into the compound of the embassy and, and tell him to wait there, to wait there. 
And in the morning, the ambassador came with his personal, they opened the gate and saw someone. And, who are you? Well, well I am a boat person. Someone uh, brought me here. Please don't reveal I, 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 our identity. Don't tell that uh, a monk <laughs> uh, has brought you here. That someone, someone just helped us here. And then the ambassador, he understood. He called the police. The police came and uh, record the name of a person and bring the person into the prison. That person is safe. Otherwise, the, the policy is to push them out and die in the sea. We, do, we did many uh, un, un, illegal things like that. Finally, we were discovered. We had high three boats. And our three boats were full of, uh, of refugees of uh, both people. Our intention is to sell them to Australia. To Perth. To Darwin. And we, 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 uh, we, uh, we arranged so that uh, the both people who have enough water, medicine, and a little bit of pocket money and we, we intended that when the boat was about to arrive, we will hold a press conference and say that, well, the boat people are coming. Please, please don't push them away. That's the kind of thing that we used to do, see. We, are, we do not speak about, we did not speak about compassion. We try to, to do the work of compassion. And there are things like that. We rent boat out into the sea, we rescue people. We try by illegal ways to help the victims of discrimination. One night, the police of Singapore came and surrounded our office. They have discovered the underground uh, network. <laughs> You know, we did, in our office, we did, we did sitting meditation every morning. We did sitting meditation in the evening. Because we need that. We need the spiritual dimension so that we can be strong enough, compassionate enough to continue because it's very difficult. At that time, there were three boatloads of people, both people on the sea, and the government just discovered our, our network. So, so they arrest one of our boats. In fact, that is the fourth boat, not, to, not for carrying both people, but to, to go back and forth and supply them with uh, water and uh, uh, instant noodle uh, and medicine, and that was caught. So our people were hungry, miserable on the table. And there was a storm, and our boat did not have the authorization to come and take refuge in the waters of Singapore, of Malaysia because they wanted to die on the ocean rather than to, to come. I was sitting on the solid ground, but I was floating. Because my life was with the life of both people were the same, you see. Imagine you are responsible for the life of nearly 1,000 people, 300 in one boat, 400 in another boat, and so on. And there was a child being born in the third boat, the Lipdan. There was and I was in communication with uh, that boat. It's so difficult. And if you don't practice sitting meditation, walking meditation, you become insane. You cannot be yourself, you cannot help. 
And that very night, my office was surrounded by the police at midnight. They came and confiscated our passport. Sister Cheng Kong was there, her passport, French passport, was confiscated also. I hold a refugee passport. And they gave us the order to leave the country in 24 hours. How can you do that? Why? Almost 1,000 more people are still in your, in your responsibility. Very difficult. So from 1 o'clock to 5 o'clock in the morning, we all practice walking meditation. Walking meditation is not a luxury. In order to still be yourself, to find a way. And finally, at, at 4 o'clock, we get the idea. He said that we have to go to Philip Gasso. We have to ask him to intervene so that we can stay 10 more days to wind up the operation. And then we were out at 5 o'clock, but there was no, no taxi. And the embassy will open only at 9 o'clock. They were not in a hurry. They didn't have 1,000 more people to, uh, to take care of. So we had more time to do work in meditation. And then we were there at the gate of the embassy when it opened, and we went in. And we talked to the ambassador, and he wrote a letter to the government of Singapore, intervening, intervening in our favor, asking them to allow us to stay 10 more days to wind up the operation. And then we wait until 11 o'clock to have that letter. No, no. Yes, almost 11 o'clock. And we, we run to the office of uh, the Prime Minister, Mr. Lee Kuang Yew. And when he, he got the letter, he had to, to convene a meeting of all the cabinet members. And we were waiting outside. And finally, they said, yes. They said, we should go right away to the Ministry of Interior, to the police headquarters, and had our visa renewed for 10 days. We had only 15 minutes in order to go there. <laughs> because the that, deadline that is drawing close. <laughs> because before that, they said that you go to the airport, and uh, before you uh, you, mount, you you climb into the, the plane, we give you back your passport. So we went through this kind of, uh, of situations. And we know that if we don't have a spiritual dimension in our life, we will be lost. So dear friends, when you come here, you are not seeking for social, uh, political support. Because there is a tendency to, to speak about your suffering, your difficulties, so that you can get more people supporting you in order to fight the other side. That is a big temptation. If uh, you are strong, you have more supporters, the other side will have to, to die, to withdraw. And that is the hope of many people. But we know that that kind of activities have been going on for many, many years. It has not brought any, any fruit at all. And Plum Village has a very different kind of approach. That we should go, we should have a real peace process. We should have a real roadmap for peace. And it should be based on our spiritual strength that uh, is lacking in our leadership. So if you can bring peace into yourself, if you can bring uh, solidity into yourself and your group, 
you may be able to influence your government.